Resortloop.com is proud to be sponsored by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. While the kiosks are closing up parks and Disney Springs is closed right now, you can still enjoy Joffrey's by visiting joffreys.com. There you can find all their great coffees and a brand new stainless steel tumbler that looks fantastic and reminds me of Spaceship Earth. You can find all that at joffreys.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. For those of you who have joined us at the Polynesian Village Resort Hotel, aloha and welcome aboard the Walt Disney World local monorail system. During the trip, we request that everyone please remain seated and that there please be no eating, drinking, or smoking. Thank you. Our next stop is the Magic Kingdom. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. This is ResortLoop.com, the gateway to the magic. We're going to talk a little Disney today, but we're talking Disney International. We're going across the pond. Joining us on the show, you've heard him before, Mr. Christopher Bartlett Walford. Christopher, thanks for joining us. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me, Tim. Christopher, you got to give us a little update. You've been on the show before. You've had some uh, family changes, I think, since we've talked to you last. Tell us what's going on. Yes, uh, there is now, or there there are now, there is now. <laughs> it's very late here when we're recording. It is, it is. <laughs> there are now three Bartlett Walfords. Jessica and I had a little baby. Aww. Well, she did most of the work. Well, yeah. I watched. <laughs> <laughs> with pop, I was, with popcorn. I was present. <laughs> you were there. some of it. <laughs> you were in support until you passed out. We've had a little baby boy. Aww. He's actually He's actually 11 months old as we record this today so yeah he's um he's doing well he's doing well i i must must have introduced him to looper nation live at the time um but he's he's called robin because mm -hmm. jess loves winnie the pooh that Aww. is genuinely why he's called robin because she has christopher robin oh look at that yeah and and he was going to be called winnie if he was a girl but Aww. he wasn't no but yeah so, yeah, we're doing well. well. Well, how are you, Tim? Well, congratulations. We're doing good. I mean, you know, we're doing the same as everybody else here. And uh, we're just we're talking before the show. Very similar to how you guys are doing over there in uh, Great Britain. Kind just of a, keeping going. Kind of locked down, not really going anywhere you're not supposed to go. No, it's 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 tricky, but we're getting through it. That's right. And Disney Plus helps. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, absolutely helps. Like, I don't think I don't think the day has gone by since it all started that we haven't kicked disney plus on as soon as we possibly could <laughs> before we get on with the show what's your favorite thing on disney plus so far i love the mickey shorts ah i, I really like them and i think it's because obviously mickey minnie's runaway railway kind of launched just before all this happened and that was my first visualization of them because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i was waiting to see them on disney plus so then i as soon as it came out, I was uh, we watched it, and we watched Lady in the Tramp as well, which we really liked. the The original or the uh, no the, the, the new, new one. one. Uh -huh. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really well done. I really liked it. It was different. It felt like they could have just made that, and the first one didn't exist, and it was still really good. Uh, I, I really liked it. I really really liked it. So we were quite surprised by that. How and then I've started making my way through the Marvel films in order. Oh, that's what I started doing. What are you up to? Yeah. Um, I think I've just finished the first Thor, so not too far up yet. Okay. But fun fact, the uh, Thor, The Dark World, was filmed in the area that I live in. Get out! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th there's a, a, an area of South London called Greenwich. For those of you who aren't familiar with, with London, it's used for a lot of films. Greenwich, the, the, um, the Royal Naval College area, uh, which is where Jessica and I had our wedding. Um, the, the where Christopher Eccleston's character kind of where the main climax battle of the the film happens in Thor: The Dark World, uh, that is uh, the Greenwich area uh, where they film a lot of films. They filmed Les Misérables there. They film a lot of The Crown there, I believe, mm -hmm. as well. Okay, quite a popular series. So, and yeah, that's that's kind of uh, it's my backyard, <laughs> as you'd say over here. But yeah, it's um yeah. That's filmed in literally about five minutes from my house. Wow. Christopher, I can tell you, and I've mentioned this on the show, so maybe you already heard this, but uh, part of the Avengers and Captain America, the Winter Soldier, filmed in Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Crazy. So I've been on some of those streets. I'm like, yeah, that explains all the potholes on these roads. 
See, that's the thing, <laughs> especially with Marvel films and, and any kind of action film that's set in London. I, there's one thing I'd like to say or just ask film producers, please, can you make your geography of London accurate to, to the actual <laughs> geography of London? Is it off? when you'll get when you're getting a tube, quote, one stop, you do not go from that stop to that stop. <laughs> there's no, there's no it's, it always, it's always a representation of the tube line, and it's always wrong. <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me being picky now. <laughs> uh, well, Cleveland being blown up in a, in a bunch of rubble is pretty much accurate, so you're yeah, making up yeah, for it with that side al- of things. always an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Cleveland's beautiful. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you can do, you can get away with that. <laughs> All right, Christopher, we better go on with the show. We, we had a very interesting. Uh, we did some little chatting online, and we came up with an idea. Actually, you came up with an idea. We're going to talk about ten of the things that we. I say we, but I'm just going to let you read your list, and I'll glom on. <laughs> <laughs> that we hope Disney does not change post pandemic. So everyone knows it. Every- things in the theme park industry and the leisure industry are going to look very different so i i thought exactly that we want we wish disney's going to stay the same we probably know it's not going to be exactly the same so we hope this is we hope these are ways that disney doesn't alter things right and it may or may not be tongue-in-cheek <laughs> i will say so we, we need a little bit of levity go. so i think this will be a good idea we'll, we'll go yeah. with it so, I've been thinking, and I hope Disney doesn't replace all the water in the water rides with hand sanitizer, because I think that wouldn't work. That would not work? I don't think it would work if Typhoon Lagoon's wave pool was just one massive wave of hand sanitizer, just to make sure everyone's covered. One. I don't, <laughs> I don't want them to change that. That's number one. Totally different viscosity, so I don't think that's going to work. Exactly. And you don't yeah, get I mean, it in your eye. Don't you get just it in your as eyes. you got dry, the sand would be on you again, and it's just sticky. It's <laughs> <laughs> just well, a massive pool of aloe vera hand gel. Ooh, the also, aloe vera. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't have sting if you got sunburn, would it? Oh, my goodness. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> but there will be I always make sanit- that mistake. See, I'm a wealth of hand sanitizer with a baby now. <laughs> Everyone was panicking for hand sanitizer. I already had buckets of the stuff. <laughs> right. You got the little one to protect. <laughs> Um, Another way, I don't want Disney to change. Obviously, health and safety of all of their staff and all of their cast members is the the paramount and all of the guests as well. Absolutely. But I hope they don't make parades socially distant, meaning that performers have to stay two meters apart in single file. So each parade takes eight and a half hours from start to finish and it covers (laughs) the distance of a run Disney marathon. I think that's not a good thing. That that would not be a good thing. I hope they don't do that. (laughs) I think you can count on them not doing that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah every parade starts at the castle from magic kingdom but it actually goes through every other theme park that they own because everyone has to stand six feet away and there's tens of thousands of people <laughs> well you just change the music depending on what land they're in and it's rethemed we'll go with that yeah exactly okay. exactly so that was um, number nine um, i think we're up I, to number eight pardon number eight on your list right is that the next one yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so one rider per ride. I don't think that would work. So I hope they don't just let one person per ride. Because it's going to mean that any one time there's going to be record breaking queues at the smaller rides. And then it's just an average day for Galaxy's Edge or Flight of Passage. That's true. One person per ride. So let's see if you were watching the American Adventure. About, oh, goodness about me. what? 12 people get would queue, get through. Get in the queue now. <laughs> 12 people per day. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I went, there was only one person in it. But it's, <laughs> wow, I like that. I love the American Adventure. Jessica may or may not have fallen asleep, but oh. it was a very hot day. Oh <laughs> uh, well, the air conditioning is quite may, lovely. We may have drunk our way around Epcot, but what? <laughs> <laughs> but before Robin came along, by the way, we're we're going to re- oh, reemphasize yeah, that. Absolutely, it was that was our honeymoon. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um. I hope Disney doesn't change Mickey Mouse's name to Mickey Mask. Okay, okay, I see what you did there. Hey, I <laughs> on a, on a very side note, they've announced uh, in the last couple of days, and you may have spoken about it already, but the the changes to Shanghai Disneyland when they start to open on Monday, um, and I'm I'm tentatively happy the fact that the face characters, the princesses and the princes and and such, 
don't have to wear masks, but you will be able to see them in person, but not get too close. Just a little note that I think that's a a nice touch, as safe as you can possibly be. Right, and it's right. quite it's quite it's quite impressive. I think the levels of uh, detail that Disney are going to already make sure that they're they're going to get it right. And I I can only imagine if it doesn't go right, then they're going to take their time and reset and do it again. So a little side note, I'm quite happy with that and they, impressed with that. They will, and I think we need to remember that all this could relative be relatively temporary for maybe i don't know a few months you know something like oh that. exactly you know so, I'm, I'm sure you, one, one can only imagine what's going to happen in the next few months and you know that's what my lovely list is for who knows what's going to happen <laughs> i right. hope disney doesn't replace balloons that you can buy with inflatable rubber gloves that you can then take home and reuse hey <laughs> a little howie I mandel action <laughs> i don't think that would work <laughs> <laughs> Can you, can you imagine people walking around? Mummy, mummy, can I have a balloon, please? No, I'm afraid you can't. But we do have a lovely helium infil- helium filled inflatable latex glove for you. <laughs> we need four. Can you buy four, please? Yes, that's $84, please. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, crowds are going to be a bit of an issue when it comes to reopening the parks. Uh, so to make sure that nobody stays... Uh, for fireworks at the end of the day to, you know, reduce those really intense, really compact crowd numbers. I hope Disney doesn't replace the fireworks show with the White House press briefings set to music. Oh, man, I won't wish that on anybody. I don't think that would be a hit. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I think he'd probably quite like it. But moving on. Um, I hope Disney doesn't change the name of ESPN Wide World of Sport to just ESPN Wide World because there is no sport. Oh, that's true. I'm not a huge sports fan, but I feel really bad for uh, everybody who is. I mean, what would it be? It would just be a field. The ESPN field. (laughs) If you build it, they might come, but they probably won't. They're not allowed to. Nothing is ever on there when I go. I want to see it. But yeah, no, it's sport Sport needs to come back some way, some way. I hope Disney doesn't make you not sit with your partner at a restaurant because you have to be six feet away because they're very small tables. So I hope Disney doesn't make you sit on the table next door so you can only eat on your own. that will be rubbish. <laughs> we need four tables of one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sir. That's a nine hour wait. What? <laughs> Have you got Disney dining? <laughs> and we'll be dining family style. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> or oh. maybe to on on uh, the buffets to make sure you stay six feet away from the chefs making your food. I hope Disney doesn't give you just really long knives and forks. I am prepared to bring my own six feet uh, serving utensils if I need to. Just like a garden fork. That's right. It'll look like a uh, survivor challenge, actually. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> or in the UK, we'd call it like a crystal maze game. It's okay. like a skills based puzzle TV show. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you have to you have to get the Mickey waffle to your table over the five families without touching anyone else. <laughs> and there's a pillar. <laughs> um, I also hope okay. Disney doesn't have mandatory 20-minute hand washes. Now, we all know it's really important to wash your hands as as often as possible, and it's going to be so imperative that you keep hygiene up to a maximum standards when the parks reopen. But I hope it's not mandatory every 20 minutes with like an alarm that sounds like beep, beep, so you know it's 20 minutes because you have to leave the queue of your ride that you've been waiting in for three hours, and then you have to go to the back of the queue again because we all know there's no queue jumping. So I hope they don't do that. I hope they install new hand wash places all around the parks. How about hand washing droids? They roll oh. they roll around from person to person and you wash. See, I like that. that. You could call it Star Wash Land instead of Star Wars Land. That's right, or R two H two O. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh. Yeah, you see that you d- some hand dryers do look like droids now. They do. So that's, see, that's Tim. That's genuine. Right, Disney. If you're listening, that's copyright to Resort Loop. Okay, you can't <laughs> you can't use that without telling Tim he's got a cut of the profit. That's right. And that's just off the top of my head. Imagine if I gave things thought. <laughs> <laughs> if I use these powers for good. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, obviously, there's going to be a lot less people in the parks, and and if the the Shanghai opening is is anything to go by, 
you're probably going to have to reserve your time slot and you're going to have to be in a much limited capacity in the park. So as there'll be more room in the parks, I hope Disney doesn't just let the animals in Animal Kingdom roam free because it's going to turn into a much more immersive production of Festival of the Lion King. And I think they'll have a much bigger problem on their hands than a virus. There you go. You go to more of a free range show. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You hear the opening bars of The Lion King go, oh, those animatronics look very real. Oh, my goodness. And then you're stuck. <laughs> that, that looks just like that real stampede from the movie. <laughs> it's getting bigger. It's coming right at us. <laughs> I kind of want to go now. <laughs> oh, that's Scar. I kind of want to go. Uncle Scar, what's he doing? <laughs> Obviously, things are going to change and the calendar of the theme box are going to change. Um, and I know, obviously, we've been a bit, you know, we're having a bit of a giggle tonight. But yeah. I hope with everything being changed and festivals, you know, may or may not happen. Some of them, they may or may not be delayed. But I hope that uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party doesn't get delayed too much. So it starts on Christmas. Because that's just going to get confusing for everybody, even though actually uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Christmas Party does sound quite good. Oh, right. We could just combine them. Yeah. <laughs> Mick, Mickey's Not So Scary Holiday Party. There you go. Yeah. But what candy would you get? Well, you're probably not going to be able to put your hand in the candy bowl now, are you? No, no. Not the, shoot it shoot uh -huh. it towards you with like a, like a t-shirt gun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> right into your bag. Yeah. Instead of fireworks going off the castle, it's just actually cannons of Skittles. <gasps> and you have to just stand there with your mouth open. Or taste, not your mouth open because you have a mask on, but you know. Taste the rainbow. Taste taste the rainbow unless it gets in your eye, and then please don't sue. Well, there you go. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Once again, this is a light light hearted look. <laughs> okay, is it? Oh, so maybe. I better do another list. <laughs> unless we come up with another good idea, like the hand washing. Drawers. I can't remember what I can't remember what number I'm on. I'm having a lovely time. <laughs> I also I, I hope and and we we've, we've bid farewell to the attraction now. But I hope Disney don't reopen Stitch's Great Escape <gasps> as a lockdown-themed attraction where you're not allowed to leave and you just get the smell of farts in your face for nine hours of the day. Well, we call that my house. <laughs> <laughs> we Look, we've all been locked in. <laughs> we've, we've all need to crack a window. <laughs> oh, but hey, my goodness. there's going to be lots of changes. And I, I just hope Disney doesn't do any of the ones that my tired head thought of. <laughs> Although I do think that inflatable rubber glove idea is quite a good one. That, that might be a plan for what, if they do actually run out of balloons. That might be like deep in the uh, protocol. Everyone's going to have gloves and masks on. There you go. A couple of things that I hope they do do. Mm -hmm. I hope that masks become just part and parcel of the theme park experience. I know it's going to be uncomfortable, like we've said before. But actually... If it's going to raise money for people like first responders and healthcare workers and food bank charities and things like that, and it has to happen for everyone's health and safety, then I hope Disney do that. And I hope they reinvest the money that they raise for themselves of those lovely new Disney masks they're selling into wonderful good causes. And they go back into the pockets of the people who lost out because of this. I hope Disney start uh, putting their staff even more at the forefront of what they do. And I genuinely hope that every guest going to Disney, as most of them do anyway, thank every cast member they see from a safe distance and just tell them that we value them every single time we see them. Whether it's somebody picking up trash, somebody taking your photo, or somebody guiding you to a new place of the park. Every single cast member deserves a huge round of applause for putting themselves in the middle of such an incredibly crowded place when it reopens. I, th I really hope that every guest thanks the cast members and staff and restaurant workers and, and gives their princesses a, an extra wave and, and just makes them know how valued they are to us for putting our happy place back on the planet. Because I think we all can't wait to go back whenever that is. Christopher, that's such a great point. The, the one thing I've been because I've been thinking about the masks and, you know, I've mentioned that it'll be hot if you're there when it's hot. But I think the worst part about people wearing masks is you're not going to be able to see everybody smiling. No, Jessica you know, made this point earlier on. She, she said, "One of our fa we've we've said this on the podcast before, but one of our favorite things to do at Disney is the photographs. Mm -hmm. You make memories. That's the whole point of the memory maker. 
And and I know that they've said in Shanghai you're not gonna you don't have to wear a mask if you're eating. That's obviously fine. Right, of course. <laughs> I, I can slam many cheeseburgers into my face, but I don't know if I'll be able to do it through a mask. Um, <laughs> but the photos are going to look very different, and I think we all need to embrace it. I know obviously there's a, a huge thing over on your side of the pond at the moment about people standing up for not wearing masks, and and that's fine. But in a situation like that, I think we're going to have to. And if it's the rule of the park and you can't go in without one, then if you want to go in, you deal with it. But I hope there's a way of of blending it into reality a little bit more within the theme park. Because people go to somewhere like Walt Disney World to escape. Right. And it's just an extra one of those layers that maybe is taken off that escape if you do have to keep the PPE and the personal protective equipment on a little bit longer than you maybe would have. But again, like you said, let's hope this is all as temporary as it can be. And hey, that's why we thought we'd have a little bit of a giggle tonight and, and, and you know, we, we can still keep things as lighthearted as we can in situations like this. And not, provide a little bit of an escape. And that's what we want Disney for again, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes you have to giggle just so you don't cry. So you're, you're not oh, whimpering in the corner. Talk to me about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm very used to that. <laughs> but I believe in like a year, a couple years, or even years down the road, you're, you're going to look at some of these trips that you know people are taking during this time with masks and say, do you remember back when we had to wear masks in the park? What a crazy time that was. Absolutely. And we also, had, hmm. you do see many people wearing masks in theme parks anyway. There's 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 lots of people. Maybe it's because I, you know, I'm I'm I live in London and walk into the streets and even at theme parks over here, when you see tourists coming into Britain, our air quality is not great in London. So you see people wearing masks every single day before this. So actually, it isn't that big of a deal. But I fully respect that it's going to be incredibly uncomfortable in the very hot, humid heat. And I know that uh, I wouldn't cope very well. <laughs> I wouldn't cope very well with it. But that's why we go in the winter. Right, I was going to say that's one of the reasons the summer has actually been, uh, you know, more or less declining in attendance. Why isn't the fall and winter is becoming a much ma- major, more Absolutely. major travel time? Absolutely, it'll be interesting, and I know we've had a giggle today. We did, but it's going to be really interesting and and really exciting to be a part of this historical time in the theme park industry. Whether it be the park down the road, whether it be Disney, whether it be a Six Flags anywhere, as long as you feel safe and you want to, if they are okay to open and you're able to then go for it but only if you feel safe and i think that's the whole point as long as people feel safe disney is going to do everything they possibly can and i can't wait to hear what it is i really can't i'm very interested in it all the only thing that i will say that i'm genuinely a little bit sad about it looks like live performances like theater shows within the theme parks are going to be put on hold a little bit more as well and as a performer that's sad but hopefully that means when they come back they'll be even better than normal well, you know it'll come back at some point, but I, I truly yeah. understand what you're saying. It'll be back. Even if it's not until Christmas next year, it'll still happen at some point. Right. There's nothing like, and I'm not telling you anything you you don't know, like great live performances. Oh, uh, it's all, I quite like them. <laughs> <laughs> Finding Nemo are under the sea. Maybe that's what they could do. They could be under the hand sanitizer. I've gone back again. I've gone back again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, but no, it's 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 always interesting. And I and I will say this from from being lucky enough to go to a few different theme parks around the, the place. I've always been impressed at how clean Disney is. And if mm-hmm. this means Disney's going to be even cleaner, then go for it. For whatever reason, it's going to improve hygiene standards all over the globe in all different industries. So I know we have a joke about, you know, reminding people to wash their hands. But actually, if it's just if it reassures people and makes them feel as safe as they possibly can be in the happiest place in the world, then let's let's all embrace it. That's true. Disney parks have almost always set the uh, standards for cleanliness and uh, guest satisfaction. So I got to believe that'll continue. One hopes so. Well, Christopher, thanks so much for joining us on the show. I had a good time. Bit of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> it was fun. Love hearing from you. Love catching up with you and your family. I now need to go and copyright all of these ideas so that if <laughs> they happen, I go, it was our idea. Lots of trademarks <laughs> and patents will be filed. <laughs> Christopher, if somebody wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? Well, I must be honest. I've come off social media in all this for my oh. health. Um, the old mental health was a bit of an issue, so I took myself off Facebook and took myself off Instagram. However, Jessica and I um, decided that throughout our pregnancy journey, we would podcast the whole thing because we did not have a clue what we were doing. <gasps> so if you'd like to find us, you can find us at First Time Parent Podcast. 
that's first time parent podcast or over on twitter at ftpp uk and Fantastic. you can listen to how we uh how we dealt with pregnancy and actually you get to hear the moment robin was born because i accidentally recorded it on my phone accidentally that's, tr- that's true genuinely i was checking the time and because we'd been like voice noting throughout the day i accidentally pressed record and you can hear him being born oh wow <laughs> that's genuine but we've we've um we we kind of have recorded our journey from from pregnancy to mm-hmm. birth and and how we dealt with it afterwards and uh, we're getting back into it in this lockdown era so yeah if you want to Come and say hello to us there and and hear two idiot Brits talking about how they have no idea how to <laughs> grow a baby. <laughs> then um, come and see us there and say hello. That might be the greatest podcast tease ever. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, he was born. <laughs> there we go. That's that's the whole the whole thing uh, in one sentence. Spoiler alert, we had a baby. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, congratulations again. Happy 11-month birthday to Robin. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Awesome. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm Tim Scott. Facebook, Twitter, the website, resortloop.com. If you'd like to reach out, that's Tim at resortloop.com. You can follow us on YouTube, all the fun social medias that are out there. Everyone, please go out there and share the gateway to the magic. Chris, how do we wrap up the show? See you, everybody. Vacation memories will stay with you and your family for a lifetime. The Resort Loop Travel Group was created with this in mind. Our fee-free services will relieve you of the stress and confusion of finding and booking the best vacation at the best price. After booking, we will continue to monitor for ways to save you even more on your vacation. We will check for any upcoming packages and discounts to save you as many vacation dollars as possible. Resort Loop Travel Group, gateway to your magical vacation memories. Get a quote or for more information, visit resortlooptravelgroup.com.